Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to talk to you this evening about Australia's recession. Uh, the economy is doing very poorly. Uh, we got some more numbers on that this week. Uh, Canada has become the first G7 nation to cut interest rates. It looks like the European Central Bank will cut interest rates in a couple of hours time. And just wanted to talk about the bond market. Uh, I've been talking about it bottoming in October 2022, and we're starting to see some signs of a breakout. Firstly, you've probably seen this chart before. This, so we'll get to that news in a sec, but I just wanted to quickly show you the Australian market. As we enter a recession, the Australian market breaking out and pushing to new highs. And you might think, well, John, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes, it does. Recession means cutting of interest rates, money printing, stimulus, all kinds of government spending. That pumps markets. And you can see this is uh, a, five, well, a, a weekly chart going back to August 2021. We've seen this. I've shown this before, this inverse head and shoulders. We've broken out, returned to the scene of the crime to test the breakout and getting ready to push to a new high. Now, I'm not super bullish on stocks. Uh, I am suggesting that we exercise caution and be more in income funds rather than growth funds but i wouldn't be short the aussie market either um and the point purpose of this video is not to talk about the aussie market let's get to the actual news uh so gdp not looking too good uh this is reported by the government news channel abc uh, i picked abc because they're you know they're very sort of pro government at times um Although in fairness to them, they do criticize when the economy isn't going so great. And then if we come across to, I know this chart's a little mess, uh, a little bit messy, uh, but this is from uh, AMP's economist, Shane Oliver. And you can see, and he points out that this is the biggest annual slump in per capita, so per person GDP growth since the early 1990s. So in 30 years, aside from, you can see the massive swing they caused during uh, the pandemic. Uh, government manipulation of the economy did a lot, so, so much damage during that uh, COVID lockdown period. Uh, we're only seeing the beginning of those consequences, in my view. We'll be feeling the consequences of that for probably 10 or 20 years to, uh, into the future. But you can see that we've, we've got, if you count, if you measure the economy per person, the economy is shrinking by 1.3% annually. So the economy is not doing well. Canada becomes the first G7 nation to cut interest rates. So even though we've still got this massive inflation problem globally, we are going through a temporary period of, of uh, what I call back padding. Uh, politicians around the world patting themselves on the back, claiming they solved the inflation problem, which an inflation problem that they deliberately created. Uh, I think it's too early to be celebrating and cutting interest rates. Canada is cutting rates and, and that will bring us over to the bond market because bond prices move opposite to interest rates. So if governments are going to be cutting interest rates, that means bond prices are likely to push higher. The European Central Bank, uh, ECB, European Central Bank, to start cutting rates even as inflation fight continues. So as I keep saying, it doesn't matter how bad the inflation numbers are in the future. The inflation fight is most likely over. Governments, corporations, everyone really has way, way too much debt. Um, and I'll, I might just jump ahead to one quick little factoid um, that links to this. So this relates to the bond market and why central banks need to start cutting rates and why we'll probably see the US cut rates soon. The US economy now has 63 banks on the brink of de default, brink of failing, according to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC. Banks are sitting on $500 billion of paper losses. So US banks would be sitting on those losses mostly uh, due to uh, Loan, like commercial real estate loans, mortgages, and of course their bond portfolio, their portfolios of government bonds. And we've talked about this in previous videos. The bond market has had the biggest decline ever in history. Banks own many, many billions of dollars worth of bonds. They're sitting on $500 billion of losses. They probably own a few trillion dollars worth of bonds and mortgages. You've got US GDP declining. Inflation is picking back up. I've talked about that in previous videos. And Households in the US now have 17.7 trillion in debt. That's about 26, 27 trillion Australian dollars. Big, big problems. That's why they've got to start cutting rates. They've got to give up the inflation fight and uh, pretend that inflation is someone else's fault. 
and they need to start cutting rates. They need to support bond prices. I'm not saying any of this stuff is good, by the way, but from the perspective of the politicians, the central bankers, they've got to prop everything up and they're beginning that process. Canada first, ECB to follow tonight, most likely. Um, and if let's just have a look at, at what's going on in the Eurozone in what the European Central Bank should be concerned about. So this is the inflation rate in the Eurozone. As you can see through 2023, yes, inflation did come down. Keep in mind, the European Central Bank has a target. They are Their mandate is to keep inflation close to but below 2%. So we had, let's just show a little bit longer period. You can see inflation got up to 10.6% in 2022. They're supposed to keep it below this area here. Look at how many from August 2021, in fact, even July 2021, it had already gone above 2%. So we've had years of inflation way above, right? So if you have a year where inflation is 10%, that means you need four years of 0% inflation to balance it out to 2%. Of course, they won't be doing that. Uh, they'll just, we'll just have to eat those higher costs. And look at what's happened. So inflation bottomed in November 2023. You can see it had another little a little spike up. It's trending down and it started to turn again. All right, so inflation has never fallen below that. Keep in mind, they're supposed to keep it below 2%. They've never got below 2%. It's back to 2.6%. Let's have a look at the core inflation rate. So this is where they exclude items such as food, like energy, because, you know, of course, none of us buy petrol or use electricity. So why would you want to measure that? Food, none of us eat food. So why measure that when you're measuring inflation? And this is a monthly number. You can see again, the trend was inflation coming down, but now we've had the first month in May, it's ticked back up. Again, nowhere near, it, it should be at one, well, it should be at zero in my view, but if you're going on their mandate, their mandate is to have inflation below 2%. They've never got below 2%. It's ticking back up. Why are they cutting interest rates? And the answer is too much debt. Bond market needs to be supported. So let's come over to the bond market. And this is a, Vanguard ETF that measures the total world bond market. So I thought this would be a good because obviously there's many different types of bonds, many different funds we can buy. I thought this would be a good way to measure because yeah, I've I've I called for and I've been somewhat incorrect, but I would say mostly correct. Uh, I said back in October 2022, I said the bond market has bottomed. This is a historic bottom. And I've advised my, now, if you're listening to this video and you're not a client, please keep in mind, I cannot give you investment advice. This is not investment advice. If you'd like to learn if these things are appropriate for you, please reach out for a private conversation. But all I can tell you is what we're doing. My clients and I, I've advised my clients to be about 40% in bonds and bonds to be our biggest position out of the four major asset classes, real estate, stocks, bonds, and then cash, gold, crypto, that sort of stuff. Uh, bonds our highest allocation so you can see this is a five-year chart back in 2020 when governments were printing oh sorry central banks printing lots of money to buy bonds propping up bonds then we had a big crash uh, from the during the COVID highs the world bond market declined about 21 percent some markets declined 50 percent longer dated bonds but you can see we hit this bottom in October 2022 now, we retested that bottom in October 2023, a year later, and you can see a higher high was made there just before Christmas. And if we zoom in closer, you can see the bond market is a little falling wedge pattern, very bullish pattern, attempting a breakout. And if we come back here, we can see as the price is making lower lows, the momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI trending higher. That's what you call a positive divergence. It's a strong buy signal when used in conjunction with other patterns on the chart. And of course, uh, this is where I started saying, like, obviously over here, I was getting bullish on bonds. And late last year, I was saying, okay, we need to increase our allocation to 40%. Uh, we're right on that low again. And I would say so far, that has proven correct. Now, the gains aren't big. Bonds aren't crypto or tech stocks. They're not booming to the moon. But I think this is, a, I know it's uh, slow and steady, but I, I believe this is the most appropriate place to have uh, our largest investment allocation. And we're probably seeing, uh, we're seeing an attempted breakout. And of course, when interest rates are cut, bond prices go up. So the market is pricing in these interest rate cuts. So it's probably in the chart already. But if the trend, once central banks start cutting rates, they usually don't flip back to in increasing rates again. So uh, we're likely seeing a breakout here. Let's have a look at an Australian bond market. So this is an ETF that, um, again, I'm not recommending 
you buy this, but this is an ETF that tracks Australian bonds. You can see again, very similar sort of patterns. That's the June. and tested it again October last year. So that low is holding as the MACD, the momentum indicators are trending up, indicating, again, even if you're just looking at it from a chart perspective, this is a very this is a, a strong buy signal to see the low tested four times and holding, and then the momentum indicators trending up, and now it's knocking on the door of a breakout. It's struggling to get past, so it's a little bit early to say that the Australian market is breaking out. I'm just trying to get to... Sorry, I made my uh, <laughs> my mouse pointer bigger for the video and it's a little bit awkward to control, but you can see the high there, another high there, touch there, little attempted breakout, which failed, but probably pushing higher. And then of course, if the Reserve Bank of Australia, if we come across here and we see what the market is expecting the RBA to do, you can see the market is not pricing in any interest rate increases. In fact, the market believes that the RBA is done and that they're going to be cutting rates and that would of course put upward pressure on these bond funds and if you want to measure it another way we can look at us corporate bonds this is another one that i was advising a lot of clients to buy uh, it bottomed in october 2022 tested it again in october 2023 and broken out and it's now significantly higher uh, you can see that sort of falling pattern as it broke out of the downtrend came back to retest and then up she goes again. This is all, if you if you know your charts, if you follow your trends and markets, this is all very uh, textbook trading, textbook price action. And if we look at, so this is the one I got wrong. This is 20 and 30 year US government bonds. So the longer the duration on the bonds, if they're 20, 30 years, they're more volatile in price, they can drop more. And you can see, I won't take that ridiculous spike high, but from the high in August, 2020, to the low, you can see there was a 51% decline in US government debt, 20 and 30 year US government debt. So it made the low in October 22 as well. It did make a lower low in October 2023, but you can see again, the same trend, price making lower low, momentum indicators trending up. So that was a about a 10% further decline, but you can see again, same sort of pattern. Finding it's, it's in that falling wedge pattern, it's, it's a little bit early to call this a breakout, but it is trying to push higher. This is a bullish pattern, uh, bullish uh, buy signal there at the low in October 2023. And look at that potential upside. I mean, not to get back to the, even if it doesn't get back to the 2020 highs, uh, have a look at how much, it, um, again, it's, this is not a recommendation to buy. I'm just showing you data. If you were to buy, if someone was hypothetically going to buy at this price level, have a look at how much capital growth can be made in bonds, in long-term US bonds, even just to get halfway back to the high. To get back to the high is an 83% gain, just to get halfway back. I mean, that could easily occur. And of course, you do get a little bit of interest for buying these particular investments. So it's not just the capital growth. Um, I talked about the RBA um, or the market not anticipating the RBA to well, the market expecting the RBA is done raising interest rates and they cut. And what I wanted to show you was the inflation numbers in Australia, which are way worse. We looked at the Eurozone before. Uh, if we look at the, this is from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. We look at their monthly inflation indicator, keeping in mind the RBA has a mandate to keep inflation between two and 3%, which I think is ridiculous. I've talked about that many times, so I won't rant about that tonight. But Inflation got up to 8.4% in December 2022. And then if you exclude volatile, volatile items, it still got to 7.2%. Now it has been trending down, but look at what happened in December and I'll show you on another chart. Bottomed at 3.4%, so never even got into the top band, the, the upper band of the RBA's target. And now it started to trend back up. And if we exclude volatile items, uh, it's at 4.1%. So you might say, well, and then let's just have a look at it on another chart so it's easier to see, the Australian monthly CPI indicator. You can see inflation bottomed at 3.4% in December, just before Christmas, and then 3.4%, 3.4%, 3.5%, 3.6%. So it's heading back up. Now, I could be wrong. It could come could come back down. I'm, I'm not uh, making any promises in the short term as to how this is going to play out, but why is the RBA talking about cutting rates when they haven't even, 
forget about undoing all the inflation we've experienced the last couple of years. Why would they want to add another 3.6% inflation on top of the high prices we're already paying? It's just, and, and this is one thing that really annoys me. So CoreLogic is um, a private firm that they're tracking advertised rents, so how much inflation there is in rents, an annual change. So they, they're suggesting, or they're not suggesting, they're taking the data on rents that are advertised and they're saying that rents are going up 10%. The, the government is saying in the CPI when they measure these inflation numbers and they say inflation's 3.6%, keeping in mind that for about one third of the people, um, I think it's a third, it's about a third, it's about 30% or so, 30% of households rent and out of those households that rent, many of them are spending 30, 40% of their income on rent. So when rent goes up 10%, that has a massive impact on um, on their own personal inflation rate. And the reason for this is, the reason it's different is because when people get Commonwealth rent assistance, so if the government is giving you some rental assistant pay, uh, uh, payment, you're getting a maybe a Centrelink payment, you're getting some rent assistance. Well, the government doesn't count when they measure inflation they don't measure the actual price they measure what you're paying so if your rent goes up fifty dollars but you get a fifty dollar payment from centrelink well the government says oh there's no inflation and then they factor that into this 3.6 percent number and same thing they're doing with the um and let me just check my time i've got a couple of minutes same thing they're doing with the electricity uh, bill the the rebates um, if you get, if you're in Queensland, you're going to get the thousand uh, dollars plus the three hundred dollars from the federal government. So you're going to get thirteen hundred dollars off your electricity bill. They're going to factor that into the inflation numbers. They're going to say, well, electricity bills went down thirteen hundred dollars when they didn't really. So uh, that's probably a topic for another video. Again, th this measures non-tradables is domestic inflation. So inflation that's occurring inside the Australian economy. So it wouldn't count things that we import. So, for example, if a TV, uh, we don't manufacture the TV here, so this doesn't count the inflation rate of the TV. Inflation inside our economy is running at 5.77%. Why is the RBA or why is the market anticipating that the RBA is going to cut rates? It's because, as I said earlier, we are in a recession. We are in a per capita recession. The economy is shrinking per person. And just one more chart on those rents. This goes back to... Uh, this only goes to Christmas last year, but you can see this goes back to 2008 and the uh, the navy blue line, it's sort of hard to see on the screen, is the core logic. So, and then CPI is the government number. You can see from about 2010 through to 2016, the government was actually reporting a higher inflation rate on rents and it got a little bit choppy in 18, 19. And then all of a sudden, once the, uh, the lockdowns hit, uh, the government for some reason, well, not for some reason, we've talked about some of the reasons, uh, government started reporting lower inflation numbers in terms when they're measuring rents versus what the private sector is saying. Um, anyway, I've gone quite long to, tonight. I always try and keep these short, but it's a little bit challenging. Um, thank you for watching, listening, if you made it this far. Um, as always, feel free to reach out, ask me questions. Let's have discussions about these things. And thank you again enjoy uh what's tonight thursday so enjoy your weekend cheers